Hi everybody, I'm Katusha, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Kitty Crow Creations. Today we're going to be painting a maple tree on top of a hill surrounded by dark clouds. And this will give us an opportunity to practice perspective and to practice painting some clouds. I hope it's something you're interested in. If you are, come along and join us. Please remember to hit the subscription button, the notification button, so you'll be aware of all the videos that are upcoming. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Bye for now. Hi everybody, are you excited? We're gonna go ahead and get started on our um, painting tutorial of this solo oak tree on a hill all by itself surrounded by dark clouds. Um, before I get started, I wanna talk a little bit about our materials. I am using an eight by 10 canvas. And as I've always said, you can go bigger but when you're first trying to learn how to do something, it's helpful if you start small and gradually work your way up to, um, to a bigger canvas. So I'm just gonna be doing this on an eight by 10 today. Then I also have my palette paper, and, and I'm always talking about, you can get this palette paper at Michael's Hobby Lobby or Jerry's Artarama. I got, I think three of these, three packets. Um, they have 30 sh sheets each. This is a nine by 12. And it was very inexpensive to get three of them. So I really highly recommend you getting some of this palette paper. I also have a bucket of water. I bought a really neat bucket. You can't see it on the, um, on the camera, but I bought a bucket at Hobby Lobby. And I like it because it has ridges in it where you can really scrub it and get that paint out of there. And then it has another compartment where you can clean off the brush and make sure it's really clean in a, in a clean uh, puddle of water. So I really like that. Um, as far as our paint colors, I will talk about those as we move forward in the, um, the art tutorial. And the brushes I'll be using today, I'm, I'm definitely using my um, Ruby Satin Silver 5 8 inch br uh, angle brush because I'm going to use that to paint the background. I'm also going to be using my favorite um, 3 8 inch Ruby Satin Silver angle brush. And we're also going to be using this... Um, I think this is a number six. It's a number six round brush, and we're going to use it to help us make the shapes of our clouds. Now, you can also use this round brush, which is a number six round brush. I think a number six is a number six. I guess it is a number six. No, it, it, it's not a number six. It is a... Actually, it doesn't even say... Yeah, it's a number six. So... And this one, it's by a different uh, different company, but I don't know how that one's number six and this one's number six. But anyway, I'll research it more later. But anyway, I'm using this number six to to make my clouds. And I might use I might use this one just to soften up the edges of my clouds. And I probably will use a liner brush to get the details of my uh, red poppies. But we'll see. Okay. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and start 
blocking in our colors. Okay, we're doing a landscape painting. And normally when I do landscapes, I don't use a traceable because all you're doing is drawing in large shapes, which is really easy. But if you're intimidated by drawing at all, of course, I provided a traceable, so, so no need to get stressed. I'll always have a, a traceable for all of my lessons, just in case you're feeling overwhelmed about drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and start off by mixing my, um, my sky color, which is a, it, it's Payne's Gray. And what Payne's Gray is, it's a combination of Payne's Gray and um, Thalo Blue. So I'm going to go ahead and put my Payne's Gray out there. All the Payne's Gray is anyways is um, a little bit of black and some blue. But because I want it to be a little bit more on the blue side, I'm also going to add some Thalo Blue to it. And I'm going to go ahead and take out my green, my Thalo Green, because I'm also going to block in my, um, my uh, land mass my grass. Gonna put some Mars black because I'm gonna need the Mars black to um sorry I need to put my coffee over here. This is this is my sippy sippy. As the art sherpa would say you need a sippy sippy but that's mine. I'm gonna put some Mars black because I'm gonna need some of that to darken up the to darken up the green. And I don't know if I'm going to need my yellow yet, but I'm definitely going to need some titanium white just to like to to tone back that combination of that um, Payne's, uh, the Payne's gray and the blue. So, and I'm telling you these, um, putting these tops back on these, on these, the tubes of paint are absolutely frustrating okay so I'm gonna go ahead and mix I'm gonna get I'm gonna get started by mixing my paints gray and my blue just gonna mix them together somewhere here in the middle just a little bit of white I need more paints gray because I want it to be more on the on the gray side sorry I got a glare see that's too I'm just gonna put a little dab of black a little bit more okay so here's, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of shape it. I'm going to shape it uh, because the um, the land mass is about halfway, a little bit past, a little under half. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go ahead and start shaping it out. And it looks like I'm drawing the land mass, but I'm really trying to shape out the sky. So now that I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and you can do it. You don't have to be perfect about how you want that to look because we're going to cover it with clouds. Now, here's the deal. People do their clouds differently. Oh, and by the way, I sanded this before I started so to make the paint go on a little bit easier. And as you can see, the paint's still struggling. But So people paint clouds differently. For example, mine has... Um, has this dark color in it. So most people would say, start off with a blue sky and then start adding your clouds over top of it, which this is kind of like a blue, a blue, uh, blue clouds, but I wanted to add my dark in the back first and move forward. But my point is you can do it any way you want. We just want something, something in the background and then we can just alter it as we go. We just need to get some paint on this camp. So I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of water I feel like I got enough, I have some extra paint in there. But as I always say, if you're struggling to get the paint on there, put some more. Put some black. And happy early 4th of July. Today is July 3rd. When I'm videotaping this, it's July 3rd. And not sure what day it's actually going to be uploaded, but. Happy pre Fourth of July, because tomorrow's the tomorrow's Independence Day, July Fourth. So, and I can hear people popping the fireworks on the third. 
Which that's fine because we're in the in the the mood or the spirit of of Independence Day. You know, you can celebrate it all week if you want. It's just up to you what you want to do. Okay, so now what I'm going to so I got my dark color in the background, and I'm happy about that. And see right here, I see in some some spots I have I have um I can see the white canvas. I don't want to see that. It shouldn't be there. So I'm just gonna go back and color it with some more paint. Okay, so now it's nice and and dark, and so we know that when we put those clouds, it's going to have the mood of some some very um, I don't know troubled troubled cloud or troubled sky, and um, it's not your typical happy clouds. So we got our background. That's just the most important thing. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick it up a notch, put a little bit water in, more water in that, and see if I can get these sides while I'm at it. So I've got the paint on there. So we've got enough paint on that brush, we can get those sides. So um, one of the things that uh, resources you want to make sure that you have is, is to make sure that you have some good brushes that are not too that are not too soft. And they're not, they're not too firm. I'm going to put a little bit more thalo blue because I, I really need to. I'm going to need it anyway. I mean, not thalo blue, but plain, Payne's gray. I need some more. I'm going to, that's just kind of sitting there staring at me. Let me blend that in. But yeah, make sure you get some good, um, some good brushes. And if you can afford it, at one point, try to upgrade to some some um, heavy body heavy body paint or some professional grade paint and if you can't i'm telling you personally you can still get some good quality paints uh paintings done with your with the student body paint the student grade paint so no need to worry there okay so i just made sure i did i'm just going to go ahead and get my sides out the way now so i'm not worrying about them later because you're going to find out that once you paint, 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 paint all the time, you're going to be accumulating a lot of canvases. And at one point, maybe you can turn those canvases into some kind of um, income stream where you can sell them. Maybe, maybe not, but just in case. So you want to make sure you have good edges. But anyway, if, if, if you're going to sell them for whatever price, it might be nice to try to put them on some... Uh, Picture frames. I know most people that sell their paintings don't put them on frames unless they're trying to like sell them for a really expensive price. But they have some really reasonable prices on frames. So I think trying to put them in some really inexpensive frames might be a way to go. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix. I'm gonna now do my uh, do my uh, my my grass. I'm gonna mix. I'm sure. I'm not sure why I got white, but I've got some green and I need my yellow. I don't know why I didn't put yellow out. My cadmium yellow. I always mix cadmium yellow with my thalo green because the thalo green, it's it's a, a thalo green blue shade. See, I don't know if you can see it. Thalo blue green shade. And um, it, it's more toward the blue side. So when I put the yellow in it, it puts it more on the on the on the green. It, it looks more green and not so blue. I get a lot of paint because I know I'm gonna need it. Some more yellow, and I'm what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add some black to it. And the reason I'm, I need more more is black. Where's my more is black? There it is. I'm adding more. I'm adding black because what we're doing right now. I'm always saying this, and you probably get tired of me repeating it. So hopefully, at one point, I won't have to say it anymore. But you're always starting with your dark color. Usually, it just depends. It's not. It's not a a rule that's written. And stone, but usually you want to start with your darkest color that you're using. So let's just still be a little bit darker. Because when you do that, it makes your lighter color stand out better. So always try to start off with your darkest color. So I'm putting the darkest color of my grass. Just going back over that.
And really, technically, I probably should be going in this direction because that's going to be the direction of the, um, the land mass. So really, I should be painting it this way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But anyway, this is a, a, a oak tree sitting out in the middle of nowhere. I, I believe it's an oak tree. It it also looks like a, it kind of looks like a maple tree or an ash tree. It was kind of it's kind of hard to tell. So we're just going to say for this purpose, for our purposes, we're going to call it an oak tree. Okay, so I, I need some more green and yellow because and some black because that's I ran out of paint. So we're going to mix it up some more. And you see how right there, this little part right here, how beautifully it went on? It's because it ha I had plenty of paint. I had plenty of paint on the brush. And we had plenty of paint. There's no problem with the paint going on the canvas. You know, one one of these days, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a, a professional a professional level uh, canvas and do a painting on it, let you see the difference between that um, canvas and so I need some more some more phthalo green. That canvas and these um, economy uh, canvases, which I don't mind the economy canvas, canvases because I can work with it. And most people, that's what they do. And I just love how you're, how paintings, um, they like I say, they start off where well, they look like they're nothing, and the next thing you know, you have a masterpiece. Well, a masterpiece in your in your eyes. Now, I don't know this being a masterpiece for someone who sells their paintings for six thousand dollars, which would be like a master uh, artist. But for you, if you think it's your masterpiece, it's your masterpiece, and no one can tell you differently. Okay, now I'm going to get those, I'm going to go hit those sides, get those out the way. Um, be sure to go to my website at www.kittycrowcreations.com and check it out. You can uh, become a member at no cost. That gives you an opportunity to go in and... Um, and start some blogs or get involved in the blog conversations. And, you know, it's, and, you know, sometimes people, we never know who's at home and they're lonely and they just need somebody to talk to or whatever. I mean, if you're one of those people, just go to my website and sign up, be a member, and then we can communicate, you know, via blogs and talk about art related topics. Which, you know, if you're an artist, that's the kind of stuff you love anyway. Like, I love art. And I love reading um, art history. Like, right now, I'm currently fascinated with Clara Peters, who was a, a... I already mentioned this in my last two tutorials, but I want to say it again for those who didn't get a chance to hear it. But she was a... Um, I was just blown away by the fact that she was an, a, an artist in the 1600s who... First of all, she set up these tables with with the, uh, like an array of food and, and, and pastries and, and, and things like that. And I'm going to put some more water. I'm going to put some more of that on here. And um, it was beautiful. And then she would turn around and she'd paint it because she did still lives. And, uh, but, you know, being a female back during the 1600s, you know, women didn't have that, you know, that their voice was never, her comments were never always appreciated. And I'm glad we're in today's era with, where things have changed so much for the better. And uh, she she was so desperate to, now I wouldn't really say she's desperate, but if you're an artist and you're trying to, the only way that you feel like you can get recognized about your paintings is by putting your reflection in the the glassware like the like the wine bottles and the in the glass uh wine uh, uh glass uh glasses 
putting your reflection in the paintings of those, those items so people could see you to see that you're really the artist, that is extreme and actually quite brilliant. I'm gonna try that one time. I'm gonna try to do a painting and try to put my reflection inside of it. Can you imagine how difficult that would be? Okay, so we we got our um we got our our landmass, our grass, and we got our we have our sky. And I mean we didn't even have to draw anything. So what we're gonna do now, we're we're gonna work this in layers. I would say this might be, I don't know, a kitty kitty level two. It could be a one. It depends on how you how you approach it. But I'm thinking this might be a kitty level two because we have to deal with perspective and clouds and and things like that. And so it gets kind of tricky. So we're gonna go ahead and get this brush and we're gonna start making our clouds. We're still gonna we're still gonna have some dark clouds and we're gonna move forward. So we're gonna start in the corner, we're gonna mix, we're gonna get our panes gray. We're gonna get our phthalo blue and get a little bit of our white. More, more paints gray. And then we're gonna come here. See, this, we, still, we still need some more. We'll put some black in that. We're just gonna come here and make like these little bit of swirls. And try not to make them all the same. Put some down here. And I'm gonna come get some white and put some white on top of that. The white's gonna really make it stand out. And then we'll come back and highlight it with some more. The white that I'm using, the, the white I'm using right now is just to make to make the other clouds, the, the dark clouds stand out for now. And I'm just going like in a circular motion. Someone told me, you know, an artist said it if you even do it like this which I'm going to go ahead and try it like that and see if, if that actually works. I'll put some white on that. But it's really important to try to have a round brush. You can use a flat brush or an angle brush, but it's easier if you use a round brush. Look at that. Aren't those just fascinating clouds? And what we're going to do, we're going to put most of the light. So I'm going to make that more dark at the bottom because I want that. See how it's dark. I'm getting, I'm trying to get the black mixed in with the paints gray to get this, to get this dark color underneath. But we still want it to have that blue tint because that's what it's supposed to have. Get that white, make that stand out a little bit more. See, it, see if you're holding it, holding it like this and moving it in a circular motion, it lets you make those real, you know, um, light, airy looking clouds. And the way I'm holding my brush helps too. And I'm really just kind of making my clouds any way I want. I mean, it's probably going to look different from the original uh, painting that I did. Just because your paintings, they never look the same. You notice I keep trying to go back and let me get some more paints gray. Because the majority of your time of, of this painting is going to be uh, taken up by making these making these clouds. So I'm going to get this paint gray. Paints gray, put a little blue in it. I don't know how I got green in there. Let me get that on. I have no idea how I got green in that. But um, but anyway, there the, uh, there's uh, different different um, theories about how to make clouds, and if as we stated um, in my last tutorial, I think it was um, the one that we did. Um, let me put some of that underneath here because. Put more paint on that. Get, put some actual paint on the brush. It'll go on even better. So if you come and do all the dark, put some of that white in there. So 
so the ink's starting to dry out. Put some more of that white, put some of that white on there. But trying not to lose the dark at the bottom. Okay. And then what'll happen is that when you come up on the very tip of the of the cloud, that's where you put your highlight. That's where you put your lightest, your lightest color, which is white. You put it on the tip, the tip of the cloud. So this is my tip of my cloud. So I want to make that white. I'm going to make it white. I'm using see I'm holding my brush. Don't want to use a tip. Look at those clouds. They're just like amazing, aren't they? I, I love making clouds. I'm going to put some dark at the bottom. I just don't want to see that. And I'll probably still come back and put some more white, but for right now. So let me get over here on this side and put some dark over there. So I'm getting my, um, I ran, ran out of Mars black. And if you don't, if you do, you can just um, continue using the blue and the, um, the paint's gray. But one thing I want you to understand that when you're watching me do my, do my, my paintings and you're doing your paintings too, don't be a slave to what I'm doing. I mean, do what, do what you feel inspired to do. You don't have, yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Because even even mine is different from mine. I've changed it. I changed it since I since I did the last one. And that's what I love. So, so I'm out of white, so I need to get some white. Look at how those clouds are coming along. Beautiful. We're gonna do a paint where it's just all clouds. And it's probably gonna take us three hours to do the clouds because that's how in depth we're gonna go on it. That's probably gonna be one of my downloadable lessons. Speaking of that, um if you haven't, if you haven't um, watched any of my other tutorials where I talked about my downloadable lessons, I'm going to, um, on my website, I'm in the uh, process of getting some uh, downloadable lessons ready for people who want more in-depth lessons. They're a little bit longer than the, um, the YouTube videos. They're more in-depth. And they're only going to, I mean, you, you can pay for them and download them. And they're only like going to be like nine dollars and ninety nine cents, which that's really nothing. But I just want you to so so when I get to the the tips of these, like over here, I just kind of want to I want to swirl it around, but I also just kind of want to tap it. I just want to tap the tips of those. Remember, we're trying to make these clouds look angry, and I think we're getting there. But you you definitely if you really want your clouds to stick out, you've got to put that white on the on the on the top of it. So I'm putting the white. And over here in the in the reference photo, it's just like really bright over here. Super bright. So you gotta make sure we put plenty of white over here. This is where this is the lightest. I hope you gave this a try. And um, I'm just having fun with it. I just, I guess I just love doing clouds. Make sure you blend out those those edges. You don't want, yeah. You make sure make sure you blend them out. So I'm gonna put some on top of here. And. Um, Now you can you can kick this up to a kitty uh, kitty level three lesson by spinning numerous amounts of time on the clouds, which I but I'm always trying to I, I want to keep my lessons under um under my YouTube lessons under two hours. So I'm going back and I'm putting the dark underneath the light because remember we were trying to make sure we um. And when I get close to the other color, when I get to close to the other color, I'm just trying to barely tap it because I want it to have that blending effect. But I definitely want the bottom part to be dark. And if it's not showing up, I'm going to have to use more black. I really, really want this to look dark underneath here. Come back and get the white. Blend it out. 
Try to keep the tops of those white. Now I'm going to come down here and make another level of clouds just by starting with white. Try to blend it out a little bit. And you see I'm trying to be random? I'm going to hold my brush like this now because I feel like it needs to, to, get, to get more form and shape. I need to hold it up because holding it sideways wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. And you, I'm, I'm just constantly going around in circular motion. And I just really want to, like I said, I really want to get the tops of those white. Because whatever, wherever the top of, wherever the white is, that's you telling the, uh, the viewer, the one who's viewing your art, that's you telling them that that's the beginning of a new cloud. So, like that needs, this, I feel like these need more white. Try to blend it out. And I'm, and, and, I, and I'm going to move on to the next part. But I'm gonna, I don't want to spend too much time on these clouds, but I love making clouds. They're so much fun. So I don't know what that was. That was a little bug flying around. I'm going to put some more dark color down here. I really want to put dark right here. Um, try to put as much dark here as I can um, where the tree is going to be. So it'll, it'll actually stand out when we, um, I'm still using that circular motion. And it's where, it's, where the tree is going to, where the maple tree is going to be. So the maple tree will actually stand out. So tell me, do those look like angry clouds to you? They look like angry clouds to me. Love it. But like when I started on my art journey, my art journey, um, you know, everybody has their 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 um, their opinion about something, and and you know what, they're entitled to that though. That's good. I mean, that's what makes the world, you know, the world uh, function well. Is everybody has a different voice and different opinions. But um, people have their opinion of how art should be and. That's what makes them artists. I, I just came on the journey because I'm not trying to say I'm a master artist because I'm I'm so far from that. But I do enjoy doing art and I, I want to try to make my my art look as realistic as I can. And that's that's the plan. And I hope you want the same. See, I just came and put more white on top of those to make them really stand out. OK, and we're going to we're going to move on. I, I, could, I could work on this forever and ever and ever and, and never be um, be satisfied with it. So I just kind of like barely tap, tap, tap on top of those. Put some more over here. I'm going to come down here also, and I, I know I said I was finished, but I'm going to come down here and put a cloud down here because I feel like there needs to be one. I don't really see a cloud in this area, so it's going to be by the tree. I would like to have a cloud. Oop, too much white. I'm gonna put more Mars black. I mean, more Payne's gray and a little bit of black. And you see me still going in that circular motion. By the way, this this um, airy, a light, fluffy look using a circular motion is best done with a round brush like this. If you try to use another brush, I mean, you can do it, but you might have some complications when you do do it. Okay, so I'm going to go get some black and get some um, more of that paints, and I want to make this look dark under here. Because I still want, because I felt like the darkness was getting away. I'm going to try to... Some over here, too. There, that's perfect. I love it. I think we're good. Okay, let me stop because if not, I'll just keep going. Okay, so what do you think? That was cool, huh? So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna come down and we're going to start our um we're gonna start work on the rest of it because we're done with the sky. I'm gonna get a cup, 
sip of my coffee. Because I almost forgot that I had it. Okay, so first thing I want to do is find my chalk pencil. And in the reference photo, I don't know if you can see it. Let me, let me just put my coffee over here. In the reference photo, it, it shows you that on this, on this paint, on, the, on this land mass, you have part that's grass that's going up like this. And you have another part that's just going straight. So what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt to outline what's happening here. Okay. Okay, so what this means is that everything down here is going to be grass is going to be going up like that, okay? And everything on top here is going to be going this way. And because by doing that, it helps us see that, it helps us understand a uh, perspective. If this was all grass, it will look like everything is flat. If it was all going like this, it will look like everything is flat. But by making this grass going up and down and the top part going um going horizontally this way, it makes it look like you're you're in the forefront and you're moving to the distance. And that's what I really, really like about this um, lesson. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to do the grass. We're going to start by, um, over here in this area, it's a little bit darker than this area because um, apparently the highlight, I think, is more over here. So that's where we're going to put it. So let's get our, my, let's get my little friend. A little round, my little angle brush, and we're gonna start putting in some some green. I'm gonna start off with some yellow. Some um, I need to get some more yellow out. We're gonna start with some uh, phthalo green, and um, we're gonna put add some, a little bit of yellow to it. You know, um, I haven't had a chance to go to um, the field of poppies in Antelope Valley. I guess it's really, really popular. All those beautiful poppies. I need to go there and take a reference photo is what I need to do. But I've been procrastinating because that's not dark enough. It's more black. I've been procrastinating because everybody's been going there. And it's like, I don't want to go where everybody else is going. And so I'm just going to go and randomly put some like grass strokes. And I want it darker over here. And they don't have to be perfect. It's just that this part over here needs to show that uh, is darker than all the other. Well, actually, this all needs to be dark, and we're going to put the light over top of it. Because it, you think about it. If you don't have anything dark, how is your light going to show up? So what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm going through and I'm putting like these uh, strokes of dark grass wherever I can, trying to make it look like grass. Hopefully trying to go in the random, random directions. And when you do it, I'm I'm trying to, if I can, have three different levels of grass, like one here, one here, one there. I'm just trying my best and we'll see how that goes. And the grass is kind of going just straight up and down. It's like no. Gonna get some more of that green and the yellow. In the black. I'm going to keep going. And then we're going to go to the next color. But we're talking, I, I was talking in my last um, tutorial about how um, if you're having, um, if you're feeling, you know, frustrated and overwhelmed with this quarantine, that there's all kind of resources out there to help you help you emotionally, and um, I'm sure one of the things they're going to suggest is to do art because there's such th there's such a thing as art therapy, and I can totally see why. I know that my students, when you know they're feeling they're having a rough day and they're feeling frustrated, we transition to art and turn it into a lesson just to get them you know to get them refocused because. Art is very relaxing. At least I think so. People who are not artistic probably don't think so. But you know, I hear so many stories about people who said they'd never painted in their entire life, and then they started painting, 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 and started creating masterpieces. And there's a lot of people that are going to those paint parties, 
who are really becoming a phenomenal artist. And why? Because they're painting all the time. That's the point. That's how you become better by painting all the time. Okay, so it looks like I've got enough of the dark on there that I can start adding. Okay, so now we're going to go to, I'm going to get lots of green, and I'm going to start adding, I'm going to go to the next level of color, which would be this color, and I'm going to start adding grass. Okay, I'm going to start up here. I'm trying to, there's too much paint on my brush. And I'm trying to just go up and down to show indications of grass. But yeah, you know, and I hear it all the time. And um, so we're going to do it in two, three different layers. There's a layer here. And, and, and it's at this point, I'm going to try to start going in, in random directions only because I want to. The um, But not, I'm trying not to go over that line because that's, that's something separate. That's the other part of the land that's going to give us uh, the depth and perspective that we need. So I'm just kind of... Right now I'm just trying to make strokes of grass. And then I'm going to skip a little bit of a line, a, a gap, and I'm just going to come over here and start another row. But I don't want to put too much over here because remember over here we, we kind of want to keep it dark. So I'm going to skip. I'm going to, I'm really going to kind of skip right here. I'm going to skip that part and just start coming over here. I know it doesn't look like much now, but it will. And you and I, we, we all know that acrylic painting is a process and it, because it involves layers. Okay, now I'm going to go to the next row. And we're just building up, building up, trying to make this grass. It's really not going to show anything until you put the lighter colors. Okay, so now we're going to go even lighter and get some more green. Now we're going to go even lighter. Okay, so I've got that. And, I, and I'm using this angle brush because it makes the really the really awesome grass strokes. So I'm just trying to go this way and that way. And hoping I can achieve what I'm trying to achieve. Trying my best not to go over, over the um, that line that I put there, which I just went over it. I mean, you can go over a little bit, but not you don't want to go over it too much because, as a matter of fact, just a teeny bit. Let's go over just a little bit. And if we do this and we and we end up losing a lot of our a lot of our dark color, guess what we can do? We can go back and add it. But anyway, I want to go to that field of poppies um, in um, Antelope Valley here in California. Because number one, they're beautiful, and that's what I want to do. Over here on this side, the um, the uh, gr the grasses are a little bit longer than the other the other parts, so I'm going to try to make them a little longer. Trying to keep my angles, my strokes right. It's not always that that easy, but let's see if we can make it work. Okay, so that's one level. I'm going to come down and make the next level. And you're trying to you've got to keep a gap in between so you can see that you have you got to have gaps so you can see yourself incrementally going up to to get to the level of the tree, which the, the creates an illusion of, of the perspective. And I learned in um you really gotta check out um Rod Moore. I went through his well. I almost went through it. I didn't, I didn't really get a chance to completely finish it, but because of, you know, with the quarantine and virtually teaching and stuff, that, that put that to a screeching halt, and I didn't get a chance to finish it. So um, eventually I will. But the certification, I, he teaches this uh, this three-color um, three color method, and uh, he also teaches you um, how to anal critically analyze um and land landscapes and how best to paint them and how all your cool colors go in the back and your warmer, darker colors come toward the front. 
and your uh, your your uh, yellows and uh, greens and stuff come toward the the front, and your I think I, I just said your blues go in the back. Okay, I'm not going to put too much over here because remember, we're trying to keep that dark. Okay, so we got that. So guess what? Guess what we're going to do? We're going to go to the next layer of color. Make it even brighter. Let me rinse out my brush. It's getting too, um, it's got too much paint on it. And so it, it won't create my angles the way I want it to create. But yeah, the cooler colors in the back, um, darker, darker colors. Uh, so I'm going to try to make these a little bit more, more um, grass-like. And then when I get through with this this layer, we're going to put a, a layer that looks more yellow. Hence, that would kind of prove uh, Rod, Moore's, Rod Moore's theory of the fact that warmer colors go in the front, cooler colors in the back. But we're going to, um, when I get through with this, we're going to add yellow to, to that. I just, you know, okay, so doing art, it really makes you appreciate our world that we live in. And what I mean that the, our nature, the, the way nature is set up. And it also goes to, sh it, it, and the reason I said it, because when you're out and about, I don't think we really analyze and appreciate the nature that, that, that we're surrounded by and how it's structured. I mean, we don't think about, we don't think about perspective. We don't think about, just like in the last uh, tutorial I did, we painted raindrops on a uh, a dandelion seed, and we don't think about the fact that those raindrops consist of all kind of different colors. We see a crystal drop of water, and we just think it's crystal clear. Where it, it but it has more to it than that. And you know what? And, that, and that's one of the things I want to do. I want to be able to just slow down, and really well. Right now we're we're on quarantine, but slow down and really take a look at at nature and what and what it has to offer okay if you hear that noise i'm sorry they're popping fireworks which is to be expected because today's july the third and tomorrow's tomorrow's fourth of july independence day okay. it's a little bit of a okay so now that we have that i think it's looking pretty awesome and we haven't even done the top part yet, but we will get to that. Okay, so right now I'm going to go uh, with much more yellow. And um, that's not yellow enough. We will we'll scoop it up over here, a little bit of the green. And I'm leaving all that color there because we're going to have to put it up here, but, it, but we're going to go this way with it. So let me see if that's really, yeah, that's pretty yellow. Okay, this part over here, I'm gonna come back to that because I want this part to actually be darker. So we're gonna move over this way and make these parts a little bit yellow, more yellow. And it's here where I'm trying to make the the grass grasses go in different directions. I'm gonna put some down here. And I'm trying to skip around. I'm trying not to just be more um more uh, structured and regimented as I did with the other greens. I'm just gonna these. I'm just gonna be a little bit more rand, uh, more um, random. But so anyway, the uh, you know thinking of the Rod Moore method and just. Um, he, he's he's one of the believers that believes that um and it actually it's it's pretty clever that uh I'm just still trying to get these strokes in because as you can see if I get these strokes in it's gonna look like we're at a distance with this grass but you can you can start any landscape with the three the three primary colors and you, and you can do it well three colors three colors and then a booster color. So you got your primaries, you got your red, you got your yellow and your blue. 
but then you can use like a, a one or two booster colors like CAD, CAD, um, CAD red, use um, burnt umber, burnt sienna. Okay. Just really trying to get this. Right. We're just going to cool it, cool it on that right now. We're going to come up and do the top. Um, so the top, we just need to start off with our, it's the same format. Start off with the one color green. And I'm just kind of going like this back and forth. And back and forth motion. I kind of want, and I want to, and I want to outline this and I'm going to do it. Just outline it. Go back and forth with this color. The golf course green. And then we're gonna add some yellows to it. Because we already got the we already got the background dark blue, so that's that's good. And we can and you can we can play around with it later. But right now, I just want to get the and uh, but yeah, the clouds. Um, just you know, just some of these these things that we're doing that the skills you can just you can get a piece of paper, like you can get a piece of. It doesn't have to be intricate. You don't have to have all the main supplies that I tell you to get. But you, you need paint. You don't have to have any fancy smancy um, a canvases. Just get yourself some brushes and some paints, and start and start painting. That's what you that's what you need to do. So I'm just I'm going over a little bit over that grass because, like I said, we're trying to make it look like perspective. And if we can, that's great. I'm trying to create a line right there so we can see it. Now I'm going to get some of that yellow and make that yellow color. I'm going to go over this. And you'll see in a minute how it's going to start looking like um, it just needs more yellow. And we're going to put more yellow down here too. So we're going to put some over here. Actually, gonna block it off. You get some more yellow. Just doing the perspective is kind of tricky. I'm gonna get this yellow, mix it with a little bit of the green, and I'm just gonna come through and go. I might put some darker green right there because I, I think I want it to be darker green. Yeah, like I said, this one's probably a kitty a kitty uh, level two painting. See, a lot of people don't like this vibrant color, this vibrant color, this green, and really they tell you to, to gray it back by putting in the uh, your your complementary color. But I rather like it. I like it a lot. That's why I, that's why I like sometimes to watch John uh, Lasandra on YouTube, his YouTube tutorials, because man, he gets those vibrant colors in there, and they look they look great. I love them. I'm trying to go over the grass part that 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 kind of came up, uh, these little pieces right here. I'm just trying to go over them just a little bit or try to blend into them so we can not make these look so separate. Okay, so now we need some yellow, but before that we do that, I need a little bit more dark over here. That's That was looking too, um, 
It just needs to be darker. So I'm going to put some more green, a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to come up here and just make this, this just needs to be a little bit darker. And that's all I need. And then down here, this needs to be darker too. I'm just going to go like that and scrape over the top of some of this other stuff because it's just there. Put some more right here. Okay. All right. I just needed to make that darker. Okay. So here's the issue. We need to get some more. We need to get some more yellow in there. It's still, it's still nice and green. But we need some yellow, and once we get the yellow, we can go on and start working on the tree and then work on the poppies, and we'll be done. Okay, so let's get our yellow, more yellow. And then we're just going to go through and put a little, we're going to put that in here. Just barely, I'm just barely dry brushing over top of, of, the, of the canvas, barely. Trying to barely go over top. Okay, so I keep telling you, look, look at the, um, I'm trying to keep some dark in there, keep some dark in the background, because we still want, we want that. But I keep telling you, look at, and I'm probably going to go back and put some more of the dark in there. But if you can, look at how this paint is going on this canvas and how vibrant it is. You see how vibrant it is? That's because it's heavy body paint. It's professional grade heavy body paint. That's what I should do on my website. I should I should give away a, um, a free set of, of heavy body paints. I think I'll do that. So somebody can, can reap the benefits of having heavy body paints, just trying them out and see how they work. Trying to mix this yellow in and all of this. Okay, I just need to make that a little bit further. Okay. So we've got that, and I'm rather liking it. Okay, so we need to put some more yellow on the grass too, because it's not, it's missing something. I'm gonna put a little bit of green in that, but more yellow. More yellow. Okay, so we need to put a little bit of that yellow in there, see? I'm not going to put it everywhere. I'm just going to put it here and there. Try not to be too heavy with it. Put that some here. I'm just trying to dry brush it on there. That's all I'm doing. I don't mean to put that that bright, but. And like we dry brush it up at the top. So I'm totally into, um, what are some of your favorite shows? I am totally hooked on Brit Box because the, the, you know, I've been watching the British, uh, uh, detective shows. Oh my goodness. Um, or, it's either Britbox, Britbox and a the Acorn channel. They have a lot of, for sure, the Acorn channel, I watch Doc Martin. And if you haven't seen Doc, Doc, Doc Martin, watch it and you'll know why it's so good. You got to watch it. But um, on Britbox, I've been watching um, and keeping up with the show called, well, it, what's old? It's an older show. It, it probably canceled in probably 2000, I don't know, 16, 17 or something. But um, they're detectives, and they're hilarious, and the show is really awesome. Okay, so I think we're good with that. I don't want to do too much. Put a little bit of that over here, and some over there, over here, and I think that's good. Okay, oh, that looks so pretty. Look at those colors. I think I need to just go up here and wet that. I feel like I just need to. Oh, 
outline that with some yellow. And that's what I'm doing. Okay, so now we get to work on our tree, our lonesome tree that's sitting up there all by itself. Okay, I'm going to start off with the trunk. And I'm going to use my, um, my, uh, my liner brush. I'm going to start, I'm going to get some burn umber because I didn't take any out. I'm going to get some burn umber and mix it with, uh, with some Morris black. And we're going to make our little trunk of our tree. And then we're going to make our tree. And then we'll do our poppies. And we will be done with our painting. Okay, so I've got my burn umber. A little, a little black. Probably some more black. You really, I really, I, I like to, I, I try to get my colors as dark as I can so that when I put my lights on there, the lights will show up, the light, the light colors. There's not going to be a whole bunch of light on this trunk, actually, because it's, um, it's in shadow because it's being covered by, by the, the tree leaves itself. So I'm just going to go through and I'm, I'm going to put it about so four fingers, I'd probably say about six fingers over. I'm going to start a little trunk right here. Come up to about right, right there. And then I'm going to, I'm going to branch out like that and I'm going to make a shadow. You know, these shadows, oh my goodness. I, le I learned this from actually Rod, the, Rod Moore and his Learn, Learn the Paint Academy. Let me wipe some of that off so I can blend it in. That when you put those shadows on there, oh my goodness, it really, because in his, in, his, um, in his art certification course, I'm going to put a little bit of, um, I'm going gonna, gonna to get, get out a teeny bit of yellow ochre, just a little. Well, I meant to get out a little, a little, but a lot came out. But in his um, certification course, I'm going to mix um, the yellow ochre and the um, burnt umber, which really, which really makes sienna. I could have used, I took out some burnt sienna, but I didn't want to. Okay, so I'm just going to come through. And I kind of want to put some kind of something on here so you can see it. Because if I make it all if I make it all dark, you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to see it, even though it should be dark. So I'm going to blend that out at the bottom. I will come back and add some more um, dark to this side. And I will add a little bit of just a little bit of light on this side. You can see that there's actually something there. Okay. See. All right. So now we're gonna make our we're gonna make our tree. We're gonna make our leaves. I think I'm gonna use it with this round brush. And and, and the reason why I'm not really I'm not really picky. Well, I'm 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 a little bit picky on the. The brand of the brush, like to, uh, as far as making sure it has the consistency or the strength. I mean, not the brand, but the strength of the brush. Because some of these brushes, you can just get at Michael's. And it could be some off-brand brush, brush. But you have to make sure it can do what you need for it to do. If it's too soft, you're going to have a hard time getting the paint onto the canvas. I can tell you that right now. You're going to have a hard time. So this one might might do. I'm going to get some um, my usuals. That what, whatever I did down here is what I'm going to do up here on, on this tree. I'm going to start off with a dark green, which is thalo green, yellow, and some black. I'm going to try to get this dark. I don't want it too dark because then it won't show up back here. But I need to get it as dark as I can so the lights will show. The light uh, greens will show up on it. So I think that's a good, a good green. And I'm just going to come through, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of swirl around and make me an oak tree. 
you can make it however big you want it. You don't want to make it too big where it looks obs obscure, I mean, or it looks awkward. But you definitely want to um, Nope, that's the wrong brush to use because it's not getting the paint on. So I'm going to switch back to my friend. And I'm just going to come through right here. See, big difference. That paint goes straight That paint goes straight onto the canvas with this angle brush, with the ruby satin silver, because it does what it's supposed to do. So if we did our, um, if we did our clouds right, our uh, tree should show up just right. I'm going to make sure I get those those leaves way down at the bottom. Make sure that this thing really covers up with leaves. Okay, I feel like that wasn't dark enough. So I'm going to put I'm going to try to mix it again. See what I got. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Okay, so now that we have a shape of a of a, a, of a a supposedly a maple tree, I mean, an oak tree, or it could be a maple tree, whatever it is. Okay, so we have our dark to work with. So now we got we got to uh, start moving forward with some more colors that are lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some um, some thalo green and yellow. We don't want it too too bright yet, because if we do, then our light won't show. Our light colors won't show up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna kind of go through. And, and tap around here and there. And I'm using the tip of my the tip of the tip of my angle brush. Put some right there. Kind of coming off a little bit. Don't 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 cover up all your dark because then your um then the rest of your, your green won't show up. See how we have that dark in the background and our, our um, I didn't mean to put light on there yet, but that's the next color I'm going with. So that's, that's a good thing. I just want the leaves to come all the way down. Okay, so now we have that color. We're gonna put a little bit more yellow in there, go up to the next level of green, and then start putting a few highlights on there. Kind of moving around a little bit. You don't wanna, you don't wanna overpower it and, um, Take up all your dark that you have, but you definitely want to put some of that light on there. And I'm trying to do the top, the tops, like the tip of the um, the leaves that I already have on here. Okay, so now I'm going to go a little bit lighter. If you just follow the formula of going from light to dark, you can't go wrong. Honestly, okay, so now we're gonna go a little bit lighter. Try not to overdo it. I'm just doing the, the, the tops of the different areas. But anyway, um I watched a John Lissandra do his paintings and I mean his tutorials are great in length like they're they're they've got some they're lengthy but to achieve what he's trying to do I I I I would say he's getting them done in a, in a, a great amount of time because he's they're they're amazing actually him and Angela Anderson you gotta check out Angela Anderson too I, I noticed that um Throughout the years, as I learned how to paint, most artists who take a lot of time to get their artwork done are the ones who have the paintings that look the most realistic. And I hate to keep saying that, but it's a fact. Okay, so I'm going to, I add some more yellow, but I'm going to switch things up a little bit. And I'm going to throw some white in there. Because we're at that point where we need to get some white into, that's not even enough. Let me see. There we go. Now this this right here, it seems like it's, it would probably be the brightest color that you would use. And I'm just barely tapping on the edges there, but in actuality it is not, because you could really probably go all the way to white 
but we're not going to do that. And you see me, I still, you see me when I'm doing the, 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 um, putting the colors on there. I'm doing the tops of each of these uh, groups of leaves. I'm, that's at least that's what I'm trying to do. And trying my best not to get rid of the, the dark colors. And that was from my brush is too, it's got too much paint in it. Perfect. Okay, and we can, I mean, uh, and we talk about this all the time. If we, if we want to, we can keep going. We can keep adding color to that. But I tell you what I will do, only because I'm not trying to be annoying, but I'm just, I, I'm going to put some more yellow in there. I feel like it needs a little bit of yellow. And we'll see, just here and there. I'll put some right there. I'm right here. You don't have to put it everywhere, is what I'm saying. But I feel like it needs yellow. Like a, a, a more, uh, a green with, with a heavier yellow tint to it. So that's what I'm putting. And that was a good choice because it's really adding to the tree. Okay, so that tree is, I'm, I'm going to add some more stuff to the, I'm going to add a little bit of, of a highlight to the, um, to the trunk and then we do the poppies and then we're done but look at that tree and honestly i need some more highlights right there because it's not it's not standing out outside of that cloud so i'm just going to put there now you can see it you couldn't see it a few minutes ago okay so now i'm going to put a little bit of highlight on the trunk and then we are going to make our poppies and then we're done. Okay, so I'm gonna add, I'm gonna go back to that uh, mixture of yellow ochre and burnt umber, but this time I'm gonna put some white. Make it a little bit lighter. And just come here and just put a little highlight right there. And I'm just barely, I was barely touching it, barely. And that's just to, just, and I'm going to go back and put a little bit more burnt umber. because I feel like it's too light. I put too much in there. But that's just so you can see it. There we go. So now you can actually see the tree. There we go. Awesome. Cool, huh? Okay, we're gonna do our poppies and we're just gonna be random with them. Okay, the poppies, we're just gonna kinda, we're, we're gonna use my liner brush. We're gonna kinda make a bowl and then we're going to um, make a shape on top of it and then that's how you make them. I mean, that's all I can say, but we're definitely gonna need some cad red. But the way we're going to do the cad red, we're going to start off with um, a dark, well, go figure, a dark version of that, which is going to be cad red and um, burnt umber. So that's how we're going to start off with all our poppies. Okay, so here's our red. I'm going to put some cad red and burnt umber. It needs to be darker than that. So that way, if we do it this way, the um, it'll really show up. I'm trying to decide if I want to start off with white. Let me think. Let's just go through with this color and see what happens. Okay, so a circle color, I mean, a, 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 a bowl, and then you just kind of make a, what, kind of, almost like a cupcake, almost. And over here, bowl and then a swiggle almost like like i said a cupcake make one over here little bowl i'm gonna make this one a little smaller 
and then like a cupcake on top. See a circle, like a bowl shape, and then you just go like this. You can make as many as you want. Okay. I'm going to make a bowl shape. And then that, and then a squiggle. Make some of these I'm just going to make little, little indications that there might be a poppy there. And try to... Um, if you can, try to get them on top of the, um, obviously the ones up closer to you are going to be bigger and the ones farther away should be smaller. So this one's going to be a little bit bigger, small, small, bow, and then squiggle. All right, we're not going to put 20,000 of them. We're just going to put some. I guess I don't want to put some more up here. All right, so then what we're going to do is that we're going to put, um, we're going to put some, um, some phthalo blue in the middle of them. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what we're going to put. A little bit of phthalo blue for the center. You know, what? let's not do that yet. We got to put the let's let's put the next le level of red. Okay, it might be dry enough where we can just now put our straight red. Let's see how that's going to go. Try to get it, try to get the shape of a poppy if you can. So that bowl shape and then swiggle. Bowl shape and swiggle. Bowl shape and swiggle. Shape and swiggle. And I keep saying that's trying to show it. Bow shape swiggle. Bow swiggle. Bow and swiggle. And these right here, you can just just make a bowl shape because you can't. Supposed to be little, anyways. Bowl and then swiggle. Okay, I don't need that one too big. Okay. Bowl and then swiggle. Sorry about having my head down so much. Is I'm trying to paint and trying to talk to you at the same time. And sometimes I forget to hold my, my head up and look in the camera. But I see you and I acknowledge you. I know you're there. Okay, bowl and swiggle. Okay, so we got that. <clears throat> so now we're going to put some of that phthalo blue in the middle. blue. Just put it right in the middle. But more toward the, the bottom part of the middle so it looks, actually looks like a poppy. Or this, this, this is our interpretation of a poppy. We want it to look like a poppy. And hopefully they're going in different directions. 
And then we'll come back and put little green stems on them. Really too small to even show any anything inside of them. Okay, I'm going to try to put some of the dark green. We've got a little bit of green left here. So green, excuse me, um, green and then. I'm just going to have to, I hate to do this. We're just about done, but I gotta, I've got to take out a little bit of uh, paint for this green. I, I do not like wasting paint. But we got to um, go back and put some. We, gotta, we don't want our um, our poppies just floating around. We got to get them uh, grounded, so we got to add them to to the stem. Let's see this one here. That's too dark. Let's get the more yellow in there. That's. We really, you know what, let me put some black in there. I think we really need for it to be a little bit darker. That's the problem we're having. Let's see. Yep, that'll work. Just so they look like they're attached to some. And just kind of kind of airbrush it on there. Don't. Yeah, I think I want to put the yellow. It looks like it's attached. Just barely touch it, though. I'm just barely air, air, air brushing it to, um, or dry brushing it, air brushing. Dry, br dry brushing it to get it attached to something so it doesn't look like it's just kind of floating out there in nowhere's land. Okay, all right. Okay, we are all done with our filled poppies. You can actually go back and add, um, which I think I'm going to do that because this is driving me nuts. I'm going to get some red and a little bit of white. Some red and some white. I'll try to get some of this white from out of here and make a like a pink color. Because I'm looking at those poppies and they're driving me nuts because I feel like they need to have a little bit of a highlight in there. I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit on this side, not a, not a whole bunch, just a little. Because remember I told you that if you, um, and I put them underneath, underneath the, um, underneath the, like the lower, the lower part, the lower part of the poppy. Remember I told you if you have something and you can't see it, that means you either need dark or light. In this case, we need some light. Trying to add it to the, to the bottom. See, that wasn't so bad. But now you can actually see the poppies in the fields. There. Okay. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, so we got our field of poppies. And um, one, one more thing, one more thing. I'm going to take that blue... And I'm going to add some green to it. More green. And I want to see maybe a little bit. This is a teensy bit, a teeny bit of yellow. And I want to see if I can get 
just a stem that's coming from that. I'm just barely dry, um, dry brushing it. I, I needed a darker stem because those other stems were not working for me. Or you could have just came and put some dark green. <clears throat> They need to have they, they need to have a dark color around them so you can see that they're grounded to something. Okay, that's a little bit better because they were just kind of floating out there in nowhere's land. And I'm gonna blend that out. Yay, that's better. We're done. I'm going to go ahead and sign it. By the way, this is my third tutorial I've done today. So I've been on a roll. Okay, so I'm writing my name with this, um, this jelly roll uh, pen. part doesn't want to show too well okay. all right well this was our oak tree on top of a hill with very angry clouds in the background which it, it would poppies in the field and I just really really enjoyed doing this um, uh, tutorial I love this painting because I love the perspective and I love the um, the clouds I hope you enjoyed it Remember to hit the subscription button and the notification button so you can be aware about all the other videos that are coming up. Be sure to tune in to my, um, go take a look at my website, www.kittycrowcreations.com and become a member so we can, so you can, we can talk about blogs and do things of that nature. If you want the traceable and the reference photo, they're on my website as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you have a chance to do the, the lesson Always remember to explore your inner artist and thank you for tuning in. Bye for now.